uh, let, let's let's send a, a, a trick over. You see, as I'm pressing this this button, as I'm pressing the side here on the encoder, you see triggers are arriving in the trigger scope on this side. And if I'm pulling the fader, you also see that I'm making fader values with my, my mouse here. So we have all those things in place in the emulator. We can also simulate a joystick action on the panel like that. All right, so we basically have it running. This is the main point I wanted to show you. And notice this topology is is here because we selected it in here okay because if i change this to something else then it will also change on the outside hi there this is casper from innovation lab and in this video we'll be looking at the raw panel device core for blue pill so what does it do? Well, I have explained it in this article on the Skyhoi Wiki, so please go there and read the wiki. This is what you usually get with raw panel. That is, you have a panel, it connects to a client, raw panel client like reactor, and that client like reactor would take full advantage of the panel. It would allow you to assign any kind of actions to the knobs, joystick, the buttons, and so on. Alternatively, you have a third party client, something else that wants to use the panel and implement all the logic. So um, this is also super popular. We have a lot of partners and uh, customers who are using panels without any interaction with our panel management software reactor, but simply on their own, because this is a great way to basically interact with any of the Skyhoi panels, because raw panel protocol is so clever that it allows you to read the topology of panels and you can use any of our like 40 plus models and just with the same kind of code. So that's really clever. Those are the two scenarios. But what if you want to mix them? And that's exactly what we'll be looking at in this video. And mixing them, well, you can do it so that the panel would be connected to two clients. Actually, this arrow should be the other way because the normal way you use raw panel today, the, the only way you should use it is as a TCP server. So reactor connects to the panel. You could also have your client connect to the panel you would have to coordinate internally that you are not trying to talk to the same hardware component or read button presses from that hardware component. So you could actually have two clients connected to the same panel, but it requires that coordination. What we are offering with the raw panel device call is that you could have that panel here going through the reactor and then you could passing on some of the panel to the client, you see, like picking a few buttons and knobs and say, those are for you. You receive triggers from these. You can also send feedback to these, but keep your hands off the rest. The joystick is mine. Those buttons are mine. This is my encoders. You can even do that in reactor because this is just configuration. So you can even do this on layers like enable and disable it dynamically. Now let's look at how this really function. So here we have a blue pill device and I want to add a panel. And today I am uh, lazy, but also it kind of makes sense now that we are sitting here on a screencast that I can show you the emulator that we have. It's called raw panel dummies. And it's because you can basically start up an instance of any Skyhoi panel as a dummy that you can work with. And it will interact with you exactly like if it was a real physical panel. So that's a great tool to play with and demo with. So anytime I press these buttons, I'm essentially just emulating button presses and fader actions and so on. And you see the content in the displays. So that's really nice and very useful today. And um, we uh, should now add this panel. So basically I'll, I'll add the panel we are usually discovering on the network. And this one is, that would be this one. How do I know? Well, because the IP address is shown, the port is shown. So that is pretty clear. I'll just pick this and you'll now see that it initiates a connection to the panel. And um, obviously something changed. Now, if you look over in the reactor, it picked a default configuration, which is the most probable choice most people connecting to a Rack Fusion Live would want. In this case, connected to an ATEM switcher, it could be vMix or something else, you can change that easily, but also having a camera selector for joystick control and tele-forwarding router triggers, etc. Let's move down to this one because we have a standard configuration, default configuration called raw panel. And if we pick that one, it looks kind of different over here. All right. So now we're connected to the panel. So the next thing that I want to do is to now add my raw panel device core. And that's what it's all about, right? 
So I'll just type in raw panel. So raw panel server. Yes, thank you. Now in here, you basically don't need to do much else than to enable this one. We need to use an embedded topology. In this case, we should definitely use a Rack Fusion Live. Now you need to make this match. You need to make sure that the panel that you're using here is also getting forwarded to, to external clients as if it was a Rack Fusion Live. Um, if you don't, you should really be an expert. You need to know what you're doing. But the most likely scenario is that you kind of want to forward that topology to whatever is connecting. Uh, we, we can play with it in a moment. And then you also need to consider the raw panel port. Uh, just a word of warning, since this is running on a blue pill, it is likely that this port is not being used to forward the blue pill as an as a raw panel to any external clients. So this is probably available, but I don't know. So you, we could also pick a different port. So let's just pick 28 for the sake of this demonstration. And I'll close this one down. It says it's connected. We also see some reaction over here. And now what I want to show you is another great tool from Innovation Lab, and that is the Raw Panel Explorer. Raw Panel Explorer gives you, when you boot it up, it, you just see this super nice view of whatever panels are found on the network. All right. So on this network, we have a uh, we have three Rack Fusion Lives. I can tell you that this one is our actual emulated Rack Fusion Live over here. <laughs> if we connect to that, we can actually send stuff over. That would be the double connection, you know, where we have both reactor connected and we are connected and we can mess it all up. Then we have this panel, which is a physical panel on the table just next to me here. That is more likely what you would do in a real world scenario. And then finally, we have this one, which is the one that getting forwarded from our blue pill. Our blue pill is on this IP address and it's uh, also the port number that we uh, set up. So it's kind of obvious that this is the one we should connect to. So let's just do that. And you see, as I connect, it's actually showing up over here. So it's already working in a sense that it's kind of getting forwarded stuff from, you know, through reactor, like waiting for blue pill gets forwarded clearly uh, via the blue pill. So as I do this, Let's just pick one of these components. I can turn it on and set the color to red. I can also, um, let me see, uh, over here I should be able to just scroll a little bit. Uh, let, let's let's send a, a, a trigger over. You see, as I'm pressing this, this button, as I'm pressing the side here on the encoder, you see triggers are arriving in the trigger scope on this side. And if I'm pulling the fader, you also see that I'm making fader values with my, my mouse here. So we have all those things in place in the emulator. We can also simulate a joystick action on the panel like that. All right, so we basically have it running. This is the main point I wanted to show you. And notice this topology is, is here because we selected it in here, okay? Because if I change this to something else, then it will also change on the outside. Uh, okay, we picked an AFLI. And we are saving this. Now, um, I, I don't know if we need to actually restart the device core in a more hard sense, but I would say if we disconnect this, yeah, it seems like we are already here. It says now it's suddenly emulating an AFLI, right? So on the same serial number, basically, yeah. <laughs> So what is what is it we're getting now? Uh, it, this is kind of mixed, right? It, it pressing button number one becomes button number one on the F like this is why you need to keep these two topologies synchronized, right? Because now we are receiving that as if it was this button. But notice what happens if I pull the the fader because I think the fader is not twenty five over here. It's uh, it's called forty nine here. So we are gonna get some some you know analog input for a button on this panel. So you can see what kind of a mess you can get in if you set up a topology that doesn't match. All right, I'm back and at the Wiki pages here. And um, again, an invitation to read this uh, yourself. I, I feel there's a, a few more points that I just wanted to make following the exploration we did here because I let me, let me see how many components do we have here up to 46 or something. Yeah, we actually have more over here, but let's assume that we go back into the model and we specify something which is clearly much more limited, like a PVC fly. Let's just do that. And then we um, up, up, go over here. Now, uh, what happens if I press this trigger, which is um, 37, okay? We, we actually get the events for 37. The thing is that 37 is nowhere to be found on a PVC fly. And we just told the um, client that we are PVC fly, but we are not. 
there's uh, a thing that is also described in the wiki, which is called constraint to topology. And if we press and save that one, we should not be able to forward triggers from any of these anymore. So as I'm doing that, nothing will arrive on the client side because it will actually constrain itself to only forward stuff that is in the topology of the controller. Let's look at configuration <clears throat> because the configuration that uh, we picked is a kind of simple. We can pick any of these elements like this one. And all you need to, to do basically is to pick a library behavior called uh, sky dash raw panel colon button. If it's a button, if it's an encoder, you pick the one called pulsed. If it's, uh, let me just move over here. If it's a fader, it is called absolute. If it is uh, an LED bar, we call it base. This is because it provides some base feedback from the system. If it is a joystick, uh, intensity is the name of, of this one. So there's a really basic, simple mapping of all these things. And all you need to make sure is that you have that master behavior library included. I um, will have to tell you that you may have to log into the JSON code. Um, well, not of this one, but uh, down here, edit raw for this one. And here you can see how it is done. So this, and we are really just studying right now the default configuration. So this is a great place for you to learn because this is for the Rack Fusion Live. And, and if you intend to set this up for any other controller, you should basically copy this. Or it's for these four models. So this is what makes Reactor match these panels up. Then um, down here, you see the import master behavior is the thing that you should include. And then apart from that, you can just go nuts and define all your hardware behaviors like this, mapping them to panel number one and then the hardware component number that you want with this setting and the hardware component ID right here. That ID should probably match this one, like 10, 10, 11, 11, et cetera. All right, so that was the JSON editor, which is your go-to place whenever the UI has not caught up with the most recent changes and features in the underlying structure. A little about configuration there, but you will have to do this for other controllers. But really, uh, it is something where you can like, you know, create a new layer, you can create behavior and then add a parameter up here. You don't need to specify a, a parameter because if you look into what this one has inside of it, then it already has itself set up with all the device core uh, references to the actual device core. Yeah. What else is in the wiki? So that was a little bit about configuration, the underlying code, device core parameters. Oh, yes. Okay, let's take a look at that just briefly. So if we go here, go to this one, click parameter list, you'll see the parameter list of the device core. And inside of here, those were basically the uh, parameters that we are using, absolute binary intensity and pulse triggers. But on the feedback side, you have a little bit more because uh, with raw panel, as we are sending colors from our connected client, we send a color over like picking this one and then say, hey, let's paint this one red and so on. Then those commands that are being sent over to the panel, um, these commands down here that commands it to have a certain color and state and all these things, those end up, ooh, let me see, they end up in some parameters in the device core and they are then imported through a reactor onto the panel. So they get forwarded through reactor in this way. So we have colors, graphics, mode, um, solid header, text line one, two, and title text. It's not all, but it's the most used and most useful and standardized feedback that you can get. But we have this one called raw state. And this one is in fact the um, full state of the device. All right, so since this video is a little bit for experts and so on, let's just venture into looking at that. We have a tool at Skyhoy called, it's called TestTube. TestTube is something you run from a command line. And uh, let me see if I have a terminal I can open up here, like this one. Um, let's just put that on top of these windows. So in this terminal, um, I am now starting my test tube. Test tube looks like this. It's currently connected to the Skyhoy raw panel device core. And if I open any of these up, you will actually see, um, let me see over here. We could, we on, on button number three, we have a red color. So if we look at LED colors, then we should actually see if we open up here that we have the value red for hardware component number three. This in, in the raw state view, you can see the raw state is a string of JSON that keeps this state inside of it in a more complex form. And as soon as we begin to, to see some um, more advanced content in there, then uh, it it will um, also show. So that advanced content could be, let's go to the this one. 
and uh, it's a little bit confusing that you have a PTC fly, but I think you can live with that. So for, for the first one here, let's just uh, paste in some title and um, uh, text and text again. And also pick a pink color, turn it on like this. Okay, so we see over here on our emulated panel that we have all that. If we go to the device core, you can see that those values are available in the state right here. So that's the compile thing. That That's every single thing, like something called pair mode, and I don't know what. If you look into the color, you see this is pink, etc. So it's kind of broken out in the other ones. The mode is on. Um, the solid header is false, the headline is text, text two is text again, and so on. So all these split out values are for whatever thing you want to do inside Reactor, but for most cases, you probably just want to forward the raw state. And that is also what we are doing in uh, the configuration that we have been uh, exploring right here, if you dive into what is inside this library. At the end of this document, the wiki pages, I am... Um, um, yeah, okay, mismatched topologies. That's interesting. Yeah, I just need to mention that because now that we are kind of doing something fancy with the PDC fly, yeah, we need to add constraint topology. Ah, oh, I mentioned that already, sorry. Let's move on. Ad hoc panels, what is that? Okay, let's try that one out. Let's delete this and add a new device. Once again, it would be raw panel, yeah? Just add it over again like this. But this time, I won't use an embedded topology. I will just enable training mode, and then I will write something here, which is Tesla. I don't know why, but it's just a tag that I'm kind of putting on it because, okay, I have a raw panel set up, but I do not have a topology, right? I have a variant apparently and the training mode enabled. I wonder what that means. This is still device number one. Let's move over to uh, our, let's just disable this one and see what we have here. Now in this list, you see that we have a new panel called XP underscore core underscore Tesla. So the, the variant that I mentioned was just like a variant that gets appended to some base controller name called XP underscore core but it's still coming from the IP address of my blue pill. It's still the IP, or sorry, serial number of before. So we, we can kind of see that this is coming from the same place. If I connect to this one, I get this. This is an empty topology. There's no components on this one yet. Now, the interesting thing is that as I am now clicking elements over here, you'll see that they are being registered and popping up on this side. Let's try the joystick. What happens if I move around here? Oh, it seems like it's trying to figure out what's going on, but it actually turns out as it's training itself. It's figuring out that actually I was moving a joystick around. Now I'm, I'm, I'm pressing an encoder. And until I've kind of done it for a little bit, it is trying to figure out what's going on. Now I press this one. What is this? It doesn't, it don't know. It doesn't know. So I release. Okay, it was a button. So you see that it's training itself by simply the triggers I'm sending over. And that's training mode for you. And by this, we can build up ad hoc panels. That is the topology getting forwarded to a client. It's an abstract panel. It doesn't know actually how it looks physically or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. It knows that there are four buttons, one joystick or two joystick dimensions and an encoder. Those are now described in the topology as you can see in this, in this table down here, looking at it from the client side. So that's, that's the idea of the ad hoc mode. That is the cases where a client would want to do that. And of course, if you disable training mode again, you can basically uh, stop that training from happening. Then you can enable constraint mode. So you only receive triggers that is in, 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 in correlation with your um, uh, recorded uh, topology and so on. And at some point, we have a few things that we need to improve. But at some point, we will also be able to offer you a way to actually modify to edit this list afterwards after having recorded it. But right now that's not really possible. But that's ad hoc mode. And that concludes the training, the walkthrough of the um, raw panel device core.